Okay, first, let's talk about the best pizza in the world. Can't really show you much of anything because it's all wrapped up. But uh, I'll put a picture in here of this when it's, uh, when it's done baking because it's only partially baked. But uh, Ole's up in Fort Wayne, Indiana, they par-bake the pizza so it doesn't have the top layer of cheese on it. And yes, that's... Uh, uh, we get extra cheese so that's about a third more than you normally get but uh yeah that's over a pound of cheese to put on top of the the pizza the pizza weighs about a pound per slice uh i've cut that into six slices uh amazing the cheese is three types of cheeses shredded in-house and blended there they they cook and and they smoke their own bacon and cook that in-house all the sausage and everything is is ground there locally or in-house um absolutely it, now this thing runs uh between 30 and 40 dollars for a pizza but you can easily feed four people off of this pizza it is not uh not a small pizza and absolutely amazing all the ingredients are fresh the vegetables are fresh and cut and chopped in house family run family owned for decades absolutely amazing if you're in fort wayne indiana this place is an institution Oli's pizza so again i'll show you this thing when it's done because it is a deep dish double crust kind of chicago style pizza but not quite amazing but on to the coffee so we've already done the selection choo choo and of course the uh, coffee selection knife here the orion solaris one of the knives that uh, kicked my knife collecting into a different gear. One of the best $85 you can still spend on a knife. But Choo Choo here, he, uh, he was all about the, the Peru, even though we're still uh, finishing off a bag of this. So that one was kind of excluded. He just wanted to sit up there on the tallest bag. So it was down to these four in reality. You know pizza is kind of my standby bean, uh, so it's just there as a backup. Backpackers out of uh, Michigan we've had before, but it was on sale, so I grabbed a bag of it at Meyer along with the Costa, which is new to me. Fredericks, we just finished up a bag of this Kona, which says light, not a light roast. It is a solid uh, medium, now on the lighter end of medium roast, but uh, definitely a medium roast to me. Uh, very nice. Uh, this and this blend really well. So uh, some of these are actually for blending and uh, this is a brand new to me coffee right here. So we're gonna get into this one. I'm gonna brew a cup and tell you what I think of that. But uh, quick review, the Peru is a great bean and at under $18 for two pounds, not a bad way to go if you're at Costco. It is a Kirkland brand. Uh, it says medium roast and it is kind of towards the, uh, the upper end of medium roast, but just a little. Frederick's Kona, like I said, light roast. It is a solid medium roast. Um, very nice. Uh, could be a little bit deeper, but uh, um, a very, I think it was $6 for the bag. Uh, very nice. Now, Pete's, like I said, it is my go-to, but it's down to 10 and a half ounces, and this was a $10 bag on sale. So Pete's is about to price themselves out of my, uh, my coffee cupboard. But uh, when I catch the uh, Kalamazoo Coffee Company uh, Backpackers Blend, which is the only one I can find around here in a whole bean, uh, it is a very nice, has a nice depth of flavor. A uh, little on the, the, the darker side of medium roast, but just a little as well, uh, similar to the Peru. But uh, like I said, Costa is the one who won in this one. It says established in London. I am sure it is uh, roasted here. But uh, let me take a look at it and I'll tell you what I think. 
Okay, since it's the first time using these particular beans, I'm going to weigh out. I'm not going to make you sit here and watch me do a whole cup of coffee again. Um, you know how I do that. If you have any questions about my basic recipe, uh, I'll kind of talk you through that as I go. But um, because... Awesome. Everything. I wanted to have you here when I opened up the bag, so... Mm, it smells a little uh, darker out of the bag than it did uh, through the little sniffer valve. 24 grams. So, uh, and the, uh, uh, let's see if we can get you up here. The, um, come on, <laughs> figure out how to do this part. How full this little cup is that I measure my beans. Um, that tells me that these beans are actually fairly roasted, a little darker than, than medium, which is what it claims. So it is on the dark end of uh, medium roast. The beans are fairly light. So yeah, we're still at 24. Good there. I'm not going to weigh, uh, weigh the water and everything, but uh, I like to see how much how much the uh, the beans, this particular bean, will fill up my grinder. So, now it did, uh, I did get in on a Kickstarter recently for an electric grinder. So that'll be my first, uh, first electric grinder ever. <laughs> well, not true. I've got a inexpensive Black & Decker, one of those weird, I've had one of those, and uh, I've actually have a Sultan, I think it is, that, uh, Actually, is a burr grinder, um, a small electric burr grinder. It was like 20 bucks way back when. It does a better job than a lot of hand grinders. So, yeah, this thing, uh, this thing is, uh, these beans fill up the grinder quite a bit more than uh, the standard beans, the Peru beans that I was working on. So, uh, Costa Coffee initial uh, reaction, a good depth to the smell but a little dark which tells me they uh they probably burn off some of that uh what is james called origin characteristics out of the bean but um we'll get that ground and make a cup of coffee and i'll be right back Hit it for about three minutes and go. So we can see. Take it up right to the bottom of the three. A few moments later. But uh, give it a shake. And what you want is wow, that's a nice. Um, you want a cake to start to form in those uh, grounds. You want it to kind of form a crust on top and so that uh, when you shake it, it breaks down into chunks and then you swirl it and that slurries everything back out into grounds. But uh, everything caked up really tight. How are we doing as far as we should be? A little over halfway up between the two and the three. Looks like we might be a little bit high, but uh, in the neighborhood, and I think we're okay. The Costa, so far, smells good. Um, anxious to try this cup, but uh, I'll bring you back here in about a minute and a half. Begin my push. Now, what we're working on uh, is basically trying to get a three-minute contact time on new beans so I can adjust from there. Water temperature 185 degrees Celsius. I'm sorry, Fahrenheit. That's it. I'm going to clean up and finish prepping this cup. And uh, I'll be right back to tell you what I think of the bean. Here goes. Smells like a cup of coffee. Mm. 
nice acidity. Um, you get the, the standard chocolate notes of any coffee that's roasted past a certain level. Um, there's something in there. I can't. It's a little bit of that pecan flavor from the Cahaba, but there's something else. Hmm. Good. Um, I'm getting a little bit of a uh, light roast notes in there that, uh, just a little bit so I can, I can live with that. It gives it an interesting depth, but, um, it's one that I'm probably going to blend with one of the other beans that uh, you saw today. Probably the Peru at first, since I've got that open. But uh, that's that's it's a good bean, and uh, it was a great. Pro I'm going to say it was like six ninety nine for twelve ounce bag. Twelve ounce bag. Yeah, twelve ounce. So. Um, yeah, yeah, if you like a medium roast coffee, it's got a little bit of light note, light roast notes to it and a little bit of dark roast. It's interesting. So uh, I, I got two bags of this, so I'm going to be enjoying it for a little while. But uh, that's it for now. I hope you guys uh, have a great weekend. If you were around last night, thanks for stopping by the live and hanging out for a while. Yeah, I'm talking to you. So that's it for now. Until I see you again, stay well. Be kind. Do good. Keep on caffeinating. This is Grumpy. I'm out.